Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Tanks and welcome back to another tank review and today I'm going to be reviewing the tier 7 German medium premium tank, the Panther M10. Now before we get into the video I just want to let you know that there will be some ace tank gameplay at the end so I will put a stamp down in the description so if you just want to see the um, gameplay there will be a timestamp down there, click through that or skip to that time and then you will see the um, gameplay. If that's all you want to see. If you want to see a review of the tank, then stick around because I'm going to be doing... Um, going through the statistics of the tank while comparing it to other tanks of a similar tier. Um, and then I've got an armor viewer for you. I'll go through crew skills, equipment. Um, and then, like I say, there is some ace tank gameplay at the end. Now, Max, Panther M10. What the hell? Of all the tanks in the game, why the Panther M10? Well, good question. Glad you asked. First of all, this tank is relatively, well, it's not new in the premium shop, but it's only just been put back in um, the in the tech tree. So you can buy this tank for gold once again, and that's exactly what I did. It got put in the tech tree. It look, it's been buffed in one of the recent patches, and I was like, hmm, looks pretty good. Let's give it a bash. So what is this tank? This tank is, well, it's pretty much a panther, but it was disguised to look like the American M10 um, Wolverine tank, which is why it's got an American star and it's got the dodgy looking panels and stuff all over it. Um, so yeah, so that is what the Panther M10 is. Now I had a really bit. I've got a really big problem when making this um, this uh, tank review, and to be honest, it's a rather good problem to have. The problem I've got is I have no idea which gameplay I'm going to show you guys. I have played so many awesome games in this tank and played so many games where I've just been like, oh my god, it's so good. I don't know which ones to show you. I'm going to show you two Ace Tanky gameplays at the end, but I don't know which two. <laughs> That's like first world problems right there. Usually I'm like, oh, I don't know what gameplay I'm going to use. This one, I've got five, six games which I could probably use to be able to... um. Uh, put in this uh, tank review, so yeah, that should tell you really all you need to know about the tank. But anyway, we're gonna head over onto tanks GG, and I'll go down the statistics of the vehicle and compare it um, to some other quite popular tanks of the same tier. So here we go, guys. We've got the Panther M10 on the left-hand side. The Panther, the Comet, and the T20, just because the Comet's quite similar, and the T20 is just another tank to compare it to, which is quite a popular tank at tier seven. And I just want to point out right off the f right at the start, in this comparison, you have got to understand that the Panther M10 gets preferential matchmaking. This means that this tank can never meet tier 9s, it can only ever meet tier 8s is the absolute worst it can meet. And take that into consideration when you're looking down all of these stats. Even though I'd like to point out... When you look at all these stats and you look at the tank and you think, does it really need preferential matchmaking? Um, so yeah, so right at the start, we can see that the Panther M10 has got the exact same DPM as the um, standard Panther. It's got 2,111, which is slightly worse than the Comet, but a lot better than the T20. Um, which means it gets a 75mm gun, which is... It's not the same gun that the Panther, it's the historical gun that the um, Panther had, the 75mm uh, KWK42L75, is it? No, not the L75. Oh, that's going to bug me if I don't know. L70. Sorry, I didn't mean L75. I didn't know that. L70, whereas the Panther um, in-game gets the non-historical L100 gun, which is why you can see the penetration is, slight, is a lot higher on the Panther, because obviously longer barrel, higher shell velocity, um, more kinetic energy, more power to punch through more armor but 150 millimeters of penetration is definitely not that bad especially again because preferential matchmaking it's actually higher than the comets and um not that much lower only 10 millimeters lower than the t20 as it's a 75 millimeter gun it gets 135 average damage which is the same as the panther which is quite a little on the low side because i mean the comets is quite low um the t20 with the 90 millimeter gun is definitely one of the stronger points of that tank um, the rate of fire is really quite nice though, giving it that nice DPM. And it has got a nice ammo capacity as well, which is unlike the Comet. You can only do 8,500 damage in the Comet, um, whereas you can do over 11,000 in this tank if you penetrate every round. The shell velocity is quite nice. It's quite high on the standard rounds, um, better than the Comet in the T20. 
Now onto the gun handling, the aim time is the exact same as every other tank in this comparison. I think in the garage it says 2.3, here it's 2.21. The dispersion is joint best as well, at 0.31, equal with the uh, regular Panther, better than the Comet and better than the T20. And also the dispersions are better whilst moving tank during the tra tank traverse and the track traverse, which means the aim time on this tank is actually a lot better. And as well, it's half, well, not quite half, but about a third, has got a third less dispersion after firing the gun as well. And because the right, uh, right fire is so big, that means that the bloom is really quite low. So this tank, the gun-wise, I'd say is probably the one of the best guns in this comparison. Just because best accuracy with the best aim time, yes, it's got the same aim time, but the bus dispersions mean it has the best aim time. It means it's absolutely in incredible, incredible gun. Um, gun elevation, yeah, it's pretty good. Doesn't really matter too much. Gun depression, I was going to say it's a little on the low side, but it's not. 8 degrees is perfectly fine, same as the regular Panther, just obviously not as good as the best in class um, Comet and the T20's 10 degrees of gun depression as well. It's got fully traversable turrets, so no problem there. Onto the um, manoeuvrability of the tank, and it can go 55 kilometers an hour forwards, which again is pretty similar to the rest, same as the regular Panther. One kilometer an hour less than the T20, but faster than the Comet. It's also it's got a slightly worse horsepower per ton ratio um, than the uh, regular Panther, quite a lot less than the Comet and the T20 though, which is one point that does let this tank down slightly. And the terrain resistances don't really make up for that either. It's really not that great. Um, the traverse speed, though, on the other hand, is better than the regular Panther, which is quite nice. Um, we'll come on to the armour in just a second. And then finally, something that does let the tank down quite a lot is the 365 metres view range. But you can get out that, that up with crew skills and equipment, which I'll show you later on in the garage. But, yeah, if you just looked at these stats... It's got a better gun than the others. The mobility isn't that much worse, especially than the Panther. And it's really not that bad. I don't really see why this tank does have preferential matchmaking. I just think it's got it because it was around during the time that preferential matchmaking was a thing. And this thing, obviously, I, I do know that this thing has been buffed quite a lot recently because you don't really see them out a lot. It's not a tank that a lot of people have. And if you're watching this review, you're probably looking at getting one and I I don't usually say it this early in the video but I really do recommend this tank I really do think it is a very very good tank definitely worth the money and a very good money maker as well which again you'll see later on in the gameplay it it's everything you need from a premium tank pretty much and it's a very competitive tank at tier 7 and even when you get it in a tier 8 game um, something I should just point out is the um, APCR rounds on this tank do have 194mm penetration, which is pretty good. Um, we we'll, can easily deal with anything that you're going to meet, pretty much, except from things like Ohos, uh, well-angled Tiger 2s. But if you do meet something like that, then you've just got to try and get around them. Now, onto the armour of this tank, and whoa, that's a lot of spaced armour. This thing's a bit like, well, not a bit like the Super Purging. It's just because it's um, obviously... The Germans have taken a Panther and they've stuck bits onto it to make it look like an M10. So like rounded off the front um, where the American uh, transmission is to make it look like the front of an M10 rather than the very angular front of the um, Panther tank. And then obviously it's got these um, side panels o o over the side of the tank and it's obviously got the spaced armor on the mantlet as well. But what is the armor on this thing actually like? And I actually think it's really not that bad at all. Oh, if you angle it effectively, and if we point the gun straight at us, like that, about there's where you're going to want to angle it. I mean, the armor's not incredible, but you've got to remember, this thing is a tier 7 medium tank. So in a tier 8 game, it doesn't really matter. It's, you're going to get penetrated by pretty much everything anyway. But in your tier 6, um, in your tier six games and your um, tier 5 games... Even some tier 7 tanks, if you think of this thing's penetration at 150mm, the uh, Comet's 148 The upper plate, angled like this, is 145mm pretty much all over. The lower plate is only 90 which is a big weakness on the tank. It does still have, obviously, spaced armour covering it, so low-caliber heat rounds still might have issues. 
But the upper plate is very, very nice in this tank as well. The turret is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there are some just to the left and the right of the gun. There are some weaker points, but up, down, and right around the edges is 180, 190, some places up to like 200 millimeters of effective armor. Some places just auto ricochets. So if you go taking this thing up against like a tier 5 tank, something like that, it's really quite good. The armor is really, really, really not that bad. Which is just something that... It's kind of like, is I would say it's got a very similar like style turret to the Comet, where higher caliber guns are obviously going to go through it, um, but low caliber guns and tanks same tier are going to struggle. But I would say that the hull is a lot, lot better than the Comets as well, which makes this thing very, very nice indeed. So yeah, that's pretty much everything to do with the armor of the tank. Um, let's go jump back into the garage and I'll show you the um, crew skills I prefer taking and e explain my choices and the equipment and whether or not, I've already said it, but whether or not I think you should get one of these if you're thinking about it or not. So yeah, let's go jump back into the garage. So equipment wise guys, um, unfortunately this tank can't fit vertical stabilizers, which I forgot to actually point out when we we're going down the statistics, which does mean that, um, I because I think the Comet can, I know the Comet can, I don't know about the other tanks, whether they can or not. But that does make this thing slightly worse on it in that regard. But the better dispersions anyway do make up for the fact that the um uh, the tank can't. So you're going to want to fit a gun rammer just because obvious 10% increase of DPM mines up in the 2560 region. But that is it absolutely maxed out. I cannot get it any higher than that. But that's still very, very good. Um, I've also gone for vents, um, just to increase air, uh, crew skills by 5%, which um, just gives you a boost to pretty much everything. Aim time, accuracy, dispersion, blah, 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 blah. And then, finally, I've gone for coated optics, because combining this with um, the premium consumable that I use on this tank, and once I get, well, situation awareness I'm getting in the minute, and once I get recon as well, that actually gives this thing a really nice view range of 447 meters, which is very, very, very... Very nice indeed, meaning that you can spot vehicles at the um, maximum spotting range in the game of 445 meters if they have no camo, but if things are close than that, you do start to get rid of some of the camo of the enemy vehicles, giving you a rather nice view range, meaning that you can use this thing quite effectively, especially if you're in a not-so-great matchup. You can use this thing um, quite well as a um, spotting tank um, and spot your own targets for you, which again helps you with experience and credits, because if you're spotting your own tanks, you don't have to share it with um, another tank that's spotting for you. So yeah, that's my equipment. Um, crew skills wise, it's fairly generic. You're going to want to go full repairs to start with. Well, full repairs or camo. The camo is not great because it is quite a big tank. I went for, well, it obviously it's not. It's a premium tank. So you're probably going to be using, um, like I've got my Leopard Prototype crew in here. I haven't got a radio operator because I haven't got a German media with a radio operator. But... um. Yeah, so I've got my Leopard Prototype crew in here, and then just a Panther M10 radio operator. So full repairs, um, once it gets to 100%, you're going to want to swap out for, on the uh, Commander, Sixth Sense, obviously. On the Gunner, I've gone for Snapshot, just um, same reasons as the Vertical Stabilizer. On the Driver, I have gone for um, Off-Road Driving, just to try and get the uh, terrain resistances uh, uh, down a bit when you're off-road. So you can go a bit faster and traverse a bit quicker because the tra you don't really need clutch braking because the traverse speed is quite nice anyway. And I just think it'd be a waste of, of your first skill on the tank. Then you're going to want to go situational awareness on your radio operator and then safe storage on your uh, loader. Again, go full repairs, swap that out for Brothers in Arms, full repairs again. And then when that gets to 100%, keep repairs and then start going for things like uh, go for recon on your commander. Or jack of all trades, that's always good as well. Uh, gunner, you're probably going to want to go... Maybe Armourer? Or Deadeye? Knockout modules. If not, go for... Like, for me, I'll probably go for Firefighting. Because I um, obviously take a premium consumable. Don't take a fire extinguisher. Firefighting is going to help. On the driver, you're going to either want to go for Smooth Ride or Clutch Braking. Uh, radio Operator. Mm, radio Operator skills are a bit dodgy. Uh, well, I'm going to want to go repairs, but 
let's imagine I already have that and he's um, up there with the rest of the crew. You're gonna again want to go firefighting, possibly call for vengeance, don't really know. And then load of skills are oh, crap, but you're probably gonna want to go again firefighting, then possibly uh, swap that out for adrenaline rush once you get uh, to 100%, and then take firefighting again. So yeah, that's pretty much all your crew skills, guys. My action, I, I just thought um, my German. Sherman medium tanks. I've actually got quite a lot because my left prototype has been trained up in three other tanks at the minute, which is why I'm surprised they're not better than they are. But still, in saying that, going to be for a four skill crew soon, so that's pretty good. Now, overall, what do I think of this tank? I think this tank is a really, really good tank. It's a really nice tank to play. I really enjoy playing it, as you can uh, see by my stats in the tank. I mean, I know stats aren't everything, but look, it's right up there. Um, um, in terms of average XP, I've won 65% of my games, and all of these, I think, pretty much have been solo. I've played a couple of games in a platoon, but not too many. Average damage is really high. It's just a really, really, really good tank. Um, again, like I said before, if you want to train a German medium tank crew up, I can't recommend anything more. Um, or if you just want to make credits and you haven't really got the money to buy a tier 8 premium tank, then this thing... Um, I can't see you really going wrong with it, unless the E25 is on sale, in which case you're stupid if you if you don't buy an E25. But if it's not and you just want to buy a, ta a premium tank with gold, then I highly recommend this thing. It's quite cheap, it's 5750 so not quite as much as something like the Panther 88 or stuff like that, but it's still a very, very good tank. Especially with the preferential matchmaking. So that's enough of me waffling on about the tank, guys. Let's see what it can actually do in some gameplay. And now I've got to choose which games I want to show you. Uh-oh. Right, so yeah, let's go jump into the gameplay, guys. So here we go, guys, into the gameplay. And I decided, after looking through the gameplay, to just make it very simple for myself. Because I really couldn't decide. So I'm going to show you my most, my highest damage game. Followed by the game in which I got the most kills, which was also quite high damage, but, you know, most kills are more important. Um, now, this first game is a um, battle on Ents, gets a 51% chance to win game, and there's me and an E25, who are quite good on my team, and then a Panther M10, who's quite good on the enemy team. So, I've come to the middle of the map at the start of the game, and you can see here, um, this is was one of, uh, not the first games I played in the tank, but a, a um, game that I played quite early on in, with me playing this tank before I really figured out how much it got set on fire so you can see me in this game I'm not actually playing um, with a premium consumable which is why you can see my view range isn't quite as high and the DPM is in fact slight, uh, slightly lower than it actually is on my on this tank how I play it at the minute but in this game nonetheless we are going to see the really nice aim times the really nice accuracy of this tank as well and the pretty decent penetration considering it's a tier 7 tank and I know before you say oh well this is the Panther M10 Max but it's it, you, you're your top tier this thing gets preferential matchmaking so it gets top tier quite often um, so that's why I'm showing you a top uh, both games will be where I'm top tier but that's where you're gonna see this thing and this is just proof of this thing's DPM it is really 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 nice I'm going for the engine shots here see if we can get an engine fire you know, save yourself a bit of time. We managed to track him. This IS, we can see here, he hasn't got the top gun because he hasn't got um, 1,230 hit points. And he'll, uh, top turret, sorry. And we can also see he hasn't got the top gun because he hasn't got that really big 122 with a big muzzle break on the end. Which is why I was quite happy to just sit there and shoot that guy. Even if he would have turned towards me, I was quite happy to just sit there and shoot him. Put one into Cromwell. You try and shoot him blind, but not going to bother trying too much there. Now my team's actually losing 3-2 um, at the minute, but we are, we've we made good progress, I'm pushing down the middle of the map. And something else that you're going to see in both these games is, I'm top tier both games, like I said, I know, but I don't fire a single round of APCR in either game. Which, I mean, I know I'm top tier, but still, that, that's got to tell you something about, about the tank. Is it Chaffee there? I angle my armor. Unfortunately, the chaffy is still going through me. I assume he knows where to shoot me. The lower plate is easy to pin on this on this thing, um, and obviously that chaffy is not a uh, not particularly bad player. But we finish him off, picking up our second kill of the game. 
And now we're going to see what we can do against the most dangerous tank on the enemy team, the Panther M10. And you see me there, I actually shoot through the building because I know I've got um, enough ammo to usually shoot through the building. I fire one into the guy, I then track him, unfortunately he repairs because I tracked him and then started to move back so I could shoot him and he couldn't shoot me, um, just being able to shoot his track around the side of the building, but I kept pulling back. Unfortunately we do miss the shot of that tiger and that panther M10 is still hitting me. I fire at the building again to see if I can take it away um, from him, but we've got a little looks to shoot at. Close your eyes guys, crawl you to small tanks. Oh no. Oh, no. Finish off the looks there. Poor looks just wanted to play a tier 4 game. Now, we keep on the move here at this Panther M10. We fire. Unfortunately, we hit his upper plate then. There you see the well angled upper, upper plate. We were kind of shooting up at it as well. Unfortunately, couldn't pen it. Um, even though the penetration on this tank is quite good. And you see the Panther M10 on the enemy team is actually just purely firing a PCR at me, which is one of the reasons why he's penning me every time, even though I'm quite well angled. But he's got other issues now. He notices me, but way too late. He puts one in, and then we finish him off before he can put a second one into us. Picking up our fourth kill of the game, and that's pretty much all she wrote. I am um, platoon up with um, the T34-1 on our team, but just to get pick up the Brothers in Arms medal. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty good game. Um, I'll show you the post-game stats in just a second. Cheeky screenshot there for the um, thumbnail. Um, I'll show you the post-game stats in a second, guys. Let's go take a look at the second gameplay, and then, yeah, we'll do the post-game stats. So, here we go, guys. Second game in, and this time, again, we're top tier. This matchup's probably one of the best matchups you're going to get. A lot of tier 5 tanks on the enemy team. One tier 6, one tier 7 SPG, and then four tier 7 tanks. Which is very, very nice. It's a 68% chance to win game on Corellia. Now, I know, obviously, again, high win percentage. But this it still gives you a feel for what this tank is capable of. And just how awesome it can be. And how good the gun is. Stuff like that. Um, again, in this match, it was um, when I've been playing earlier on when I was playing this tank. So, I still haven't got a prune consumable in this tank, and I do not suggest doing this maneuver which I'm doing in a tier 8 game. As the last game I played in this tank before I made this um, tank review, I did this and didn't do any damage because I went up there, got spotted, and there were still loads of tanks sitting over here, and I got absolutely destroyed. So, yeah, note to future self, Max. So, we've picked up our first kill of the game, and now there's a VK. <coughs> Excuse me. A um, VK 300, uh, 3001, uh, I don't know, it's a VK, loaded VK, unfortunately we don't manage to get the kill on that T25-2 there, but there's a Churchill 3, the VK isn't looking at us, so I uh, focus my attention on the Churchill 3, Churchill 3 fires and penetrates us, that's because I was over angling, but look, you see me there, I adjust my angling, make sure I'm angling properly, and then he can't pen us, he just struggles to pen, with AP at least. Um, I think about shooting that VK, but then I decide, nah, let's go pick on the weak tanks first, and then we'll kill him. Kill his friends first, then kill him. So put one into the um, Panzer 3 4. Second one into the Panzer 3 4. Looks, turns around, misses all of his shots, and the IKB finishes him off. Put one into the v uh, VK, track him, he repairs quite quickly, and falls back behind the rock. But so far, this game is going pretty well. Um, Unfortunately, both. Oh, there's been. Our team. Eh, I can't speak. Our team's picked up five kills, and really, I should have probably had all five, but, you know, that, is that just being greedy of me? Um, but yeah, the IKV kind of did steal the kill on the um, looks, but. Um, I could have got the kill on the looks. I also could have got the kill on the T25 too. And there as well, that was a kill steal by the ARL to. Um, take away from me that um, the M4 but then in saying that that time he fired at the um, the M uh, the VK and I finished him off picking up my fourth kill of the game and now we're going in chasing a Cromwell and you can see the maneuverability on this tank isn't bad but it is one of the worst the, the I was gonna say worst points of the vehicle is one of the less good points in the vehicle I should say it's not particularly great but it's at the same time, it's really not terrible. 
it really could be so much worse. Now you see some sucky shooting by me here, combined with a bit of bad RNG. That shot was aimed way too low. That one was aimed a bit better, Max. That one was definitely aimed a bit better. Picking up our fifth kill of the game. Our team is now 9-5 up, so I'm not going to say we've pretty much won it, because there's still a decent T29 on the enemy team who's picked up three kills, and he's got some good artillery support in that um, TW Panther. And wow, those stats, though. 1K games each, and they've got 15 and 35 WNA. Wow. I goes, oh, 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 I'm not even going to look. When you've played a thousand games, you WNA is still in the double digits region. That's, ugh. But I'm not going to shame people. I don't like doing that. They might, that, that, well, they're obviously brand new to the game. Fortunately, our first shot in the GW Panther goes a long way to the right of the aim circle there. It wasn't really our fault. He takes a big hit. Um, I'm not sure that was what that was from. Might have been an HE round from the um, IKV. But we finish him off picking up our sixth kill of the game and our top gun. And this is the point where I see all of these tanks starting to push into my base. And I'm like, uh oh, that can't be good. We see a Leo, we stop, use the good aim time in the tank, and finish him off. So, I was moaning about people stealing my kills earlier on in the game, but those past two kills that I've got on the GW Panther, and also the um, uh, that Leo, they were kind of kill steals as well. And how do you bounce that? That's like some of the weakest armour in the game, the rear of an American tank. Ugh, it's like 30 millimetres of armour. Now... This guy's obviously a very good player, this T29, and I do think about um, contesting him, but I think he's not really doing much damage there at the minute. He's close to his own base, but we've got real big problems in the fact that we've got three tanks harassing our base. So I'm going to go back um, and help out with our base. I fire one on the move just to see if I can put another shot into him, possibly set him on fire. But no, we move back. He fires at me, misses. And now I'm clear to go back to the base and start helping. I just thought I need to go back to base because we've only really got an artillery there. Um, the S35 finishes off the T1 Heavy from up on the hill. The T29 finishes off... Um, oh, our Panzer 34. I thought we finished off the artillery. You didn't finish off the Panzer 34. And these are some very awkward shots here. I'm not actually sure what I was shooting at. Like, what angles of tanks I was shooting at. How much kick the keyboard. Um, not sure what angles the tanks I was shooting at because I was so long away and all, all uh, so long away, so far away, and all I could see was the silhouettes of the tanks. So we keep moving up. This is quite swampy terrain here, so you can see the maneuverability again is letting us down slightly. Possibly, if I'd have had better maneuverability this game, I could have been coming out of this with the pools medal, maybe, which would have been quite nice. And then I'd have just shown you the end game, and this game would have been separate because you know. Greedy, greedy, greedy Max. So, we come up. And I can see the T29. I, at this point, I do notice the T29 is, like, looking towards me. We finish off the MKV-1. Um, and I go to finish off the IS, but unfortunately, the ARL finishes him off. I fire one at the T29. Unfortunately, it does miss. Um, which is really annoying. He gets spotted again. I aim up again. Yes, and bada bing bada boom, straight into the T29, finishing him off. Picking up our ninth kill of the game, which was quite unfortunate that we didn't kill the IS or possibly that T25 too up on the hill because, wow, that is 35. Look at the gun firing. Boom. Um, it's quite annoying because we could have picked up a pools medal, my second ever pools medal, but I'm not complaining. Nine kills, 2,500 damage in a tier 7 tank. It's pretty good. So, yeah, there is the gameplay for you guys. I really hoped you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, please consider giving it a like if you found it helpful or if you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And let's go take a very quick look at the post-game stats. So, there we go, guys. In the first game on end, that was an ace tank again. Uh, uh, replay we picked up a brothers in arms medal for doing a cheeky platoon with that t 34 one at the end and a high caliber medal for doing 3930 damage picking up four kills and getting 1440 base xp also possibly more importantly we made a hundred three thousand credits profit that game like i said this tank is very very good money maker look how little the ammunition cost 
And even when I um, add prune, added a premium consumable this, to this tank, 20,000 credits a game, you're still making 80,000 credits if you have a game like this, which is very, very nice indeed. Second game, picked up an ace tanker yet again. A Radley Watt was this game for the nine kills we got, a high caliber and a top gun. Um, we got 2,626 damage, 2,626, nine kills and 1,363 base XP. Again, very, very good game. In that game, we didn't make quite as many credits uh, profit. I, did we fire some APCR arms in that game? I might have lied. Yeah, we must have done, because there's no way we fired that many AP rounds, making a 72,000 credit profit um, in that game as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Panther M10, guys. Like I said before... I really do recommend this tank. It's a very, very, very good tank, um, especially with the preferential matchmaking. Really nice gun. Um, mobility, that's not great, but not too bad. And just, I think, an all-round very good tank for what it's worth and how many credits it makes. And the good crew training as well. Highly recommend it. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this re uh, these replays, the tank review, blah, 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 blah. Like I said before, if you have enjoyed, please give the video a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Other than that, not a lot else to say, but thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.